start with you. What an entertaining game that was. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it didn't look as if it was going to be entertaining after 10 minutes mm. for Real Madrid. If you looked at Ancelotti's face, he was a worried man. Uh, but, you know, you can't write this team off. But I'm, I presume they're playing the theme tune from The Great Escape in, in the uh, Real Madrid dressing room because in some sense that's what it was. But, it, you know, City deserved what they got, which was a win. But I wouldn't say... I think, when I said deserve, they should have scored more goals, but you get what you deserve. They mm. didn't kill Real Madrid off. It, it could have been five or six. They made mistakes defensively, which makes it an intriguing game. But two players that have carried Real Madrid, we've seen La Liga, obviously, a lot this season on this network. They've carried, two players have carried them through some of the mediocrity this year, and there has been quite a lot of that in La Liga. And then moments of brilliance popped up again tonight. Benzema, best striker on the planet at the moment, bar none, and Vinicius Junior. Uh, Nate, it was a great game. Maybe it's sometimes not for the City fans, even though they did come away from this one with the win. Should it have been dead and buried, though? Um, I think when you think about the way Real Madrid have been this season, is it ever really dead and buried? I think I believe what Craig's saying there that, you know, there could have been more goals for City. But you take whatever, you know, comes from the game to be able to score four goals in a semi-final is still a thing. But I, I agree with what he was saying about the mistakes at the back, though, because they just offered encouragement. Every time it seemed like City were going to be out of the way, before you know it, there's a little mistake. Like, and, you know, we, Benzema was incredible. But to talk about Vinicius Junior, I thought for the first 50 minutes he forgot he wasn't playing against a recognised right back. And then next thing, he was all, he, he's like he forgot that Fernandinho's old enough to be his father, but he doesn't need to treat him like his son. You know, it was really, really strange. But it was a great game of football. City, they'll take the win. I think the fans will take the win as well. And I think if you look at the fact that this is how Real Madrid play away from home, the expectation is, is that when they go and play at the Bernabeu, there's going to be a better chance for City again to be trying to open them up because I imagine Real Madrid would be more front foot given the fact they need to win the game now to get through. Stuart, we knew coming into this game that City <clears throat> were going to have problems in defence with injuries, uh, suspensions. But coming into this game, is this what defined it, do you think? Or did it, was it other, 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 something other than the defence? Well, first of all, let's say it was a fantastic game, some great attacking play. But you're absolutely right, because Casemiro was missing for Real Madrid, because Alaba had an injury problem, they weren't good defensively. And you could say the same about Man City. Cancelo suspended. Walker, probably their quickest defender, well, certainly their quickest defender, not playing. Stones having to go off at, uh, you know, after about 30 minutes. And Fernandinho coming on at right back. He made the goal, but then made the big error of, of, of diving into Vinicius Junior. And then Laporte, I think, should be round on the cover. Instead, he ran straight back alongside uh, Benzema. And that's why Vinicius Junior ran straight through on goal and scored. So there was a lot of great attack in play, but you also have to question some of the defending. Defensive errors defining this game or brilliant football at the other end, Ale? A combination of both. Uh, some of the stuff that we saw from Karim Benzema, from Vinicius, some of the attacking play that we saw from Manchester was artistic work at times. The, the, the triangles, the passing, the movement, the ability of players to get open, the rotation of spaces, the spatial awareness of certain players being able to turn and find the next pass. Matis was outstanding up until he got to the 18-yard box and all of a sudden he forgot to do, how to finish a chance here and there. Foden had a couple of chances himself. There were chances left and right for Manchester City and you have to say some of that had to do with with their doing and their ability to be able to combine. But 10 minutes in, as Craig just alluded to it, Real Madrid, somebody had to wake them up and say, hey, gentlemen, it's a Champions League semifinal we're playing here. How passive and tentative was Real Madrid over the first few minutes of the game in that you allow Riyad Mahrez to cut to what? His left foot. What, what else is he going to do? What else does he want to do? That's exactly what he wants to do to find that service onto Kevin De Bruyne. And let me get to the subject of Kevin De Bruyne. Second goal. Yes, it's a mistake by Alaba and it gets a little fortunate uh, Gabriel Jesus on the turn. But you give space to the best server of the, of the ball in Europe. And that's Kevin De Bruyne to go and cross the ball. If you don't get tied to Maris, you don't get tied to Kevin De Bruyne. If you're Real Madrid, you're showing again some of your vulnerabilities. But while I think of vulnerabilities for Real Madrid, it's impossible to talk about the vulnerabilities of Manchester City. Uh, Stewie just alluded to it. Yes, Fernandinho gets turned on his attacking half, right? He gets turned. So Vinicius Jr. still has to run 60 yards to get to goal. And Laporte is 
just backpedaling, 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 unaware that Sinchenko is now covering Benzema, and he just allowed Vinicius to have a free run on goal. That is poor defending, but we saw it from both sides. We saw it more from Real Madrid, so if you're Manchester City, you think, we scored four goals at home in a Champions League semifinal, and this is still not dead, somehow. Because it was a great start from Manchester City. Do you think that surprised Real Madrid? No. No, uh, they would have been expecting it because that's what City do. They press and they pass it quickly. When they pass it quickly, they're almost unstoppable. But, you know, it was a classic case of all these little bad decisions defensively. If you think about the first goal cutting inside Mares, you think about the second goal, you got Carvajal, uh, Carvajal up the field, Militao gets dragged out into the right back position, yeah. does it, gets turned, then the ball comes in the box, Alaba makes a mistake, then the Laporte one. I mean, Guardiola must be bringing Laporte in tomorrow. So you watch this video, and then when he's leaving the room, say, hey, mate, get back in here, watch it again. <laughs> How the hell? I mean, you're sitting watching the TV thinking, what defender doesn't go to the ball in that scenario how far do you have to let a player come in the box yeah. before you go to it he doesn't even go to it and then Fernandinho it was an interesting substitution because it was Fernandinho over Aki who has played there but he's a more obviously natural defender Fernandinho more experienced will get forward better but he is a natural he's a handful Vinicius Jr and what happened was for the third goal the Foden header Fernandinho and not a too dissimilar position, got in front of him and nicked it. Mm -hmm. And that got them a goal. And that suckered them into thinking he could do it again when that was just really a bad decision not to stay goal side. So there's lots of little factors in the game uh, defensively, which is why you just can't rule Real Madrid out. City, City's Achilles heel in this competition over recent years is making silly mistakes and letting teams off the hook at key times at the knockout stages. And they've done it again today, not to say they're going to do it in Madrid, in the Bernabeu in a week's time, but they've done it again today when they could have been taking a two, maybe three goal lead to Spain. Isn't that, isn't that the sequence that you just described there with Fernandinho and Vinicius Jr., isn't that a a microcosm of the game, in that you think Manchester City, in the way that Fernandinho took that ball forward, served it over to Phil Foden, they scored the fourth goal, you think, well, okay, this is it. There's no way, no way, no chance that Real Madrid is going to come back now. But then the same, the same participants, the same protagonists, in the same sort of play, and there's a totally different outcome in which now you see Vinicius Jr. going and scoring on the other side. Just when you thought at every point in this game, when you thought that Manchester City was going to be far superior to Real Madrid and they were going to be the better team and they were going to score the goals and they were going to have a lead, a big lead going into the second leg, Real Madrid was just there to capitalize on mistakes. And this is what they have been doing over the course of this competition. Against PSG, they did the same thing. And it's a group that if you allow to hang around, they're going to bite you in the end. Manchester City just allowed Real Madrid some life that they didn't need to. And yeah, they had tightened it up, Manchester City made them defensively in these knockout stages of the Champions League before this. So how is Pep going to be feeling after this game with what he saw from his defenders? Uh, I think he'll find some positives. But, a lot of the, but for those goals, you know, they are avoidable, even for the penalty. Like, City had the ball, Phil Foden had the ball on the left-hand side and he tried to play something fancy and he gives away a free kick. But to encourage pressure when the game is at that particular point was a mistake. And then for Laporte himself, you know, it, it has flicked off his head, but the mistake is you've not made better contact, because if you do, it's not going to hit your arm. So for them, you know, they did play, they did sort of become the um, architects of their own downfall. But I suppose for Pep, he's going to look at it and understand that it's the mistakes that kind of allowed Real Madrid to get back into the game. And in some ways, you believe that when you go onto the field next time, you'll be able to deal with some of those and maybe not make them again. And I think if that's to be the case, as Craig was alluding to, when City moved the ball quickly, at times they're almost unplayable. And that Madrid midfield, they're really good on the front foot. But when you're finding people like Kevin De Bruyne behind you, you know, obviously Casemiro might be back for the second leg. But from what I'm hearing as well, I think Kyle Walker, Cantella and so on are going to be, back, are going to be available for next week anyway. So... I think it's just for them, you know, they know their mistakes. They weren't outplayed by Real Madrid by any point, and they'll be disappointed that it's just 4 3. But then the big positive is they scored four goals, they have a lead, and they know that a win or a draw in Madrid gets them into the Champions League final, which at the end of the day is the main objective for this round. We mentioned the absences, Stuart. Did Pep get the lineup right for his side, even though he didn't have those players available? 
Yes, I think he did, because he played Zinchenko on the left-hand side, which is his favourite position, and he got forward to a certain degree. So it was a lopsided back four, with Stones playing as the right-back. Ake is very much left-footed, so I couldn't see Ake playing at right-back. And, as, as Ned had just said, next week, Diaz will be a, a weak fitter, because he, he's only just played the one game against Watford. Uh, Walker should be back, and Cancelo will be back. So it's a much better looking back four, and I think Man City will be much better defensively, with Rodri just sitting in front of them. Hang on, so let's look at it though. It's 4-3, so it's a goal advantage going into this game. Mm. But it's the Bernabeu for I, Real Madrid. I think Real Madrid are going to have to score three. Mm. I know there's no away goals and all that, but I can see City scoring. I can see City scoring in Madrid. So yeah. this is still an advantage, going to the Bernabeu for the second leg with just the one goal on. You, you mean you have no confidence in Militao and Alaba and no Mendy keeping either of them? <laughs> Defence is really, to be honest, and I know there'll be all these players back, which is great, but yeah, I mean it's 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 not a I mean it's a pretty good result in the face of it. If you just flick the TV on now and say four three, great game, said to take the uh, the lead to to the Bernabeu, the three goals don't make much of a difference in terms of the away goals because that's not around anymore. But really and truly, the performance was actually better than that. But the result is not, and that's that's just a fact of the matter. So so yeah, I mean I I think if City make those mistake make those mistakes again and. And Madrid, I think they'll go out because he's just up front. They're just clinical. They're ruthless. If they don't, and this is this is I, all the time I say this with City, it's about the basics. They're so good mm. going forward. It's about the basics for them. If they get the basics right, like not diving in in front, like going to pressure the ball when you should, when somebody's driving in the box. If you do the basics, the rest will take care of itself for City. If they don't. That's what's bit them on the backside in previous years. We'll find out which city turn up next week. When they were in full control of this game early on and they're winning 2 nothing, and there is a chance for Riyad Mahrez, he takes it with the right foot, should have been 3 nothing. it is not. There was no life to Real Madrid. The life for Real Madrid came by Manchester City losing the ball in bad areas, by Ederson trying to play just a, a risky ball, an unnecessary ball, by taking a chance. And I know that this is the way that you play, and maybe this is the personality of the team, and so Ederson has the freedom to do these things. Okay, so be it. But maybe there are moments in which judgment should be a little bit better. You're in full control of the game. Why? Why give Real Madrid life? And that's the part that I think Manchester City ignored today. There were moments in which this game could have been and should have been killed off, whether by, whether by scoring another goal or defending better, or putting some numbers behind the ball and not allowing 1v1 situation or isolation or transition. And yet, this is the way Manchester City plays and this is the way they, they think of themselves. But maybe there are moments in which managing the game should be more of a priority. And it isn't because we saw that they got in a back and forth with Real Madrid and Real Madrid was more than comfortable in doing that. And one thing we know, Stuart, is when Karim Benzema on the pitch, anything's possible for Real Madrid. Well, they were 2-0 down and a ball comes into the box and he's not really favourite to get it on target. It's a great finish. He doesn't make the perfect contact, but he's in the right place. He arrives at the right time. He gets across the front of Zinchenko and just guides it into the corner. It was a brilliant finish and got them back into the game. And some of his closing down, and, and, and Ali just mentioned it, Edison gave uh, Real Madrid a chance on two or three occasions and they were unlucky when Benzema won the ball off Diaz and, and uh, Vinicius Junior was offside. So that was the key to Real Madrid getting back into the game, that brilliant finish from Benzema. Uh, Nadem, you mentioned those players coming back next week. What do you think the chances are of getting to the final for City? You know, I, I don't think you find many people that would be saying Real Madrid are clear favourites going to the second leg. You know, with that goal deficit that they have and the fact that City, I think, can score goals, as Craig was alluding to there, I think City, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call them comfortable favourites like those odds do. But you know that they can execute. You know, they made it to the final last year. They managed in other games to sort of not make too many mistakes. So the expectation is, you know, they're going to see this game back and they're going to understand that they can't do certain things like that in that stadium. I think when we look at the last time they were in Madrid, they were, you know, they, they were solid enough. They ended up leaving and getting into the semi-final. So the, I guess the belief is that has to be the foundation. And then with that, if they can find some of their front players be clinical enough on the day, then I think it makes for a good day for them. Obviously, you fancy Real Madrid to score at home. This is Real Madrid. They never give up the Madrid. They always seem to be in the game, no matter what the scoreline is. But City are a very, very good side, and I think, I think they edge it for me, and I think they'll go into that game and possibly win the tie. 
Who's going through, Craig? <laughs> Still City, I think, at the moment. Still City. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, Real Madrid, you just can never rule them out. I mean, I just, I'm just such a big fan of Benzema, 34 years old, those stats and on that graphic are just incredible. Are just incredible. But I think with the players coming back and the one-goal lead, I'm just going to edge 60-40 City. Just. Hello? I came into this series thinking that Manchester City is a better team than Real Madrid. And having seen the game today, that opinion doesn't change. Manchester City is a better team than Real Madrid. But why allow this team to live? Why? There was no need to give this team any sort of life. And while we want to focus on Manchester City and the players that are maybe coming back from Manchester City, there are also players coming back for Real Madrid. Having said all that, I'm not going to go back on it. I still think Manchester City is a better team. They exposed today Real Madrid in many areas of the field. Somehow you got to keep an eye on Vinicius. Somehow you got to keep an eye or two eyes really on Benzema. I'm going to say Manchester City, but I have no confidence whatsoever in any of that. Uh, Stuart, who are you going for? It's going to go right to the wire. I think we could see extra time. Uh, they've got great mentality, Real Madrid. Man City have got some great players and they play some great attacking football. This is going right to the wire. It's going to be just as good next week. But Man City, just by a whisker.